Nearly 15 million people have logged on and experienced the World of Warcraft. Quite commonly overlooked is the rich and illustrious lore and history behind Azeroth. Join us as we venture beyond the pixels, code, and players. Welcome to the story of Warcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Boy There's Lore, the season finale of season six right here on twitch.tv forward slash the smoking gamer. I am the smoking gamer joined today by Necroxus and Tyranor as we change the guard from myself to Necro. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh get some updates and I guess something. Uh I'll talk a little bit more about when season seven will be starting and all that good stuff. But for the moment. You guys just saw the trailer teaser thing for Eye of the Storm, which is a uh, Heroes of the Storm podcast slash show thing that we're doing here on the Smoking Gamer. It's gonna be a ton of. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking, as you all know, I've been looking forward to the Eye of the Storm for a ridiculous amount of time. Um, like literally since it was announced in like 2000 you know, BC, way the fuck back there, like, before Christ, but, uh, no, uh, ever since it was announced, I've been looking forward to it, uh, I was a big Heroes of New Earth player, and now I play Dota 2, but, uh, fuck League of Legends still, that's, fuck League of Legends, terrible game, if you play it, you, you're bad, and you should feel bad, uh, go play a real MOBA, thank you. Um, but outside of that, I, I'm looking forward to Heroes of the Storm, and this is, of course, the Eye of the Storm, our, our podcast that we're going to be <clears throat> having those discussions. Also, yes, Tyranor. Pride is working us the writers to the bone because of this thing, so you better watch it. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's, that's not actually part of the show, per se. That's something leading into it, but, uh... Yeah, we have some uh, Heroes of the Storm stuff coming out uh, very, very soon. I think, uh, like, what, a week and a half, something like that? A week and a couple days? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. I got and, and I may be working the writers to the bone, but I'm the one that has to actually make the video. So, let's... These, these may go away after a while. Um, outside of that, though, on the show today we have lore facts. We don't have lore facts, actually. Not today. Not today, unfortunately. But we do have Bitch Do Even lore. We do have a top ten, sort of. We'll get into that in a little bit. And, uh, we've got the news, as well as some info on Season 7 and some Q&A. Not a whole lot of lore going on. We're gonna... That's, that's part of the deal with see the, the break between Season 6 and Season 7. There's just not much... There's not nothing going on right now to talk about in the lore. I mean, we we sit here for a week and we like sit in front of the computer and we have like all the news sites constantly refreshing, just waiting for something to show up. Nothing's coming. We're getting nothing in terms of the story. So, um, so beta Blizzard, you need to start your beta. Yes. Also, send me a review copy of War Crimes. I asked like three times, bitches. <laughs> I want to read that shit. 
There you go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's gonna be on the show today. So let's move it right on in to some plugs like we were talking about. Uh, Eye of the Storm is a podcast for Heroes of the Storm starting soon on YouTube.com forward slash The Smoking Gamer. Uh, we're still looking for artists. We're not necessarily looking for live stream producers anymore. We've got a couple of them, but if you would like to throw in your uh, application, we, we are still accepting them. Um, and the and Mini Whelps official Smoking Gamer Guild on Malganis US Horde side is uh, finally got its raid team all set up and ready to go. Raid Team 1 will be starting their raids very, very soon. And uh, all that stuff, so yeah. I think that's it for the plugs. Uh, season six, season finale for season six, my last show uh, as the showrunner for uh, But Wait, There's Lore. Uh, Necroxus will be taking over for me. Yes. For season seven and beyond. God help us all. Um, <laughs> rumor mill has it that his first uh, official order will be. The revenge firing of Dunn. <laughs> Who knows? You'll find out when season seven starts. There you go. There you go. All right, so let's hand it over to the man who will take over the show officially in approximately one hour and 45 minutes. Necroxus, as he lets us uh, know, bitch, do you even lore? Yes, for today in Bitch Do You Even Lore, this might come off like an anti-Horde rant, but it's not. In this case, it's just an anti-Sylvanas rant, because I am utterly sick of Sylvanas, the Banshee Queen, and the Forsaken. Um, and I personally believe that Blizzard is giving her all of the wins and all of the lore because she's a popular character. Let's explain why. From the second that Sylvanas dies and is resurrected as the uh, the Banshee Queen, or I guess as a Banshee who becomes a Banshee Queen, um, we're, we're going to take a live Sylvanas and put her aside. Because a live Sylvanas, I feel like, is at least kind of interesting. Undead Sylvanas is somebody who wins literally 100% of the things that she does. Um, after she frees herself from the Lich King, she goes about defeating Varimothris. She does that with virtually no problem and uses Varimothris to take out his brother Deathrock, who just so happens to have been controlling Grand Marshal Garethos, and now she has three separate armies. So that's how she whips Balnazar's ass. And um, after that, she decides, oh, I already won everything that I wanted already, so fuck you, Garethos, I'm going to kill you. Fast forward to World of Warcraft. And the Forsaken pretty much dominate every zone that they're in. The only storyline we ever get with them where they're struggling about something is trying to develop the Plague. Their version of the Plague. The Blight. The Forsaken Blight. Um, and even when they do, them failing a strain of the Blight before they perfect it doesn't really set them back. It might kill an Apothecary once or twice, but normally they don't really lose anything. Cut to... Wrath of the Lich King, where they they finish the plague, and then in Cataclysm, she just shits the plague all over the place, and it pretty much wins her every single battle she's in. That, or the Valkyr, which she gets after the Lich King's death. Even when she's killed by Godfrey in the Silver Pine starting zone, and three of her Valkyr sacrifice themselves to resurrect her, she pretty much just is resurrected and goes about her daily business. It really doesn't affect her in any way except losing three Valkyr, which might seem like a big deal, but after that she's like, oh, I guess we'll just hide the rest and still be unstoppable. Tyranor, you can wait till I'm finished! <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. So what? Wallace did have to recover for a few days after she was killed by Godfrey. Oh, darn. That, too bad that wasn't shown in the game. Making my point, thank you. So, now we cut to, uh, I guess she's not really popular in, in Mists of Pandaria, though, she, er, present, but she's in the, uh, the Siege of Orgrimmar fight. But my point is, because she seems to be a popular character, and side note, I don't really know why other than she is, like, naked most of the time. Um, I can't figure out why she's a popular character other than she does badass things to be badass, which is really boring in my opinion. Um, but I guess because she's popular, she gets to do whatever she wants. She wins virtually everything. The plague is her auto win. And if she doesn't have enough deuce X, she also gets the Valkyr, who when they're introduced to a battle, pretty much win it for her. See Anderhal. Um, so 
In this, uh, bitch, do you even lore? My phone is ringing. Stop it, phone. I'm <laughs> bitching about the lore. Um, in this, bitch, do you even lore? I just wanted to say, Sylvanas, enough out of you. If I had my way in war crimes, you would die because I'm sick of your shit. Your presence in the lore means no other forsaken can get really any good story whatsoever. Villains who could be compelling, like Putris, get killed off right away. Um, and, you know, we need someone else for the Forsaken who can step up and be interesting. Lillian Voss could have been that, but then they made her pretty much hate being undead. So I can't really see her being the leader. So in this really rambling rambling segment of Bitch Do Even Lore, basically, fuck Sylvanas. Back to you guys. <laughs> I have one objection about your thing. You said okay. that Sylvana, Sylvanas while, while alive was interesting. She wasn't interesting at all, she was a stupid cunt. She was more interesting than she is now. I guess in the terms of she actually she lost something, so she didn't just win all of the time. This Not that she was particularly intriguing. She had a chance to kill Arthas, but instead she said, Yo, I'm Sylvanas, I'm over here. So there. She's a stupid bitch while she was alive. Yeah. I think she's a little bit more... She was. She's not, like, ever really interesting, but I think at least when she was alive, it was kind of like, oh... She's trying to save her, her people, and then she died, and I was like, okay, that was a cool character, now she's gone. Nope! That's not what happens. So. I'm gonna there say, go. I uh, actually agree. I liked Sylvanas uh, in uh, Warcraft 3 up until the point. Towards the end there, I didn't really like how things were, were going about. Uh, may, perhaps the reason she's so popular is because she was in Warcraft 3 and she's one of the only sort of pe people who have really been there with the exception, on the Horde side, with the exception of Thrall and, uh, Cairn maybe, but maybe because she's one of the original Warcraft 3 heroes, maybe that sort of started her popularity in the Warcraft universe and then, uh, just, you know, the, the pre-teenagers who see boobs... Or like, she's hot, so let's be fair. And she doesn't even look undead, she's just gray. There's like nothing undead looking about her, but she has red eyes and she's gray. And she's leading a bunch of fucking zombies. <laughs> Talk about fanon right fan fiction right there. Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly what Blizzard's um, deal with that is. Like they really I understand the concept, but at the same time, you would think by now a few things would have fallen off, you know what I mean? Like, man, at least a finger or something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Her skin is supposed no. to be as almost as tough as Saronite, so yeah. Which is just another layer of bullshit. <laughs> oh, you could just stick a sword in my chest, sorry, my skin is armor. <laughs> Which apparently is how she gets away with wearing no armor. So they actually made a canonical reason why go. she wears a bikini there, in battle. Exactly, there you go. They have canon they have canonicized uh. her half nakedness. I like it. Alright, with that being said, go back over here. Let's talk uh, let's talk a little bit about the news this week. Uh, not a whole lot on the Diablo front, not a whole lot on the StarCraft front, and not a whole lot on the Heroes of the Storm front, except for that they, Blizzard is doing a sort of, uh, hero, like, preview thing, uh, where they talk a little bit about the spells and abilities, and what the, the roles the characters play in the game mechanics-wise. Um... So that's, uh, that's what we got for Heroes of the Storm this week. For Warcraft, we have a couple of things. We have a new dev water cooler that was posted this morning. Uh, it basically talks about uh, healing quite a bit. And basically what they want to do is uh, change the game when it comes to healing. They want to give less healing abilities. And they want to be two sort of different ideas or ideologies when it comes to various healing spells uh one where it costs more but is more efficient and then one that is more or it is less efficient and then one that's more efficient but costs less and it's basically it's like healer economy uh in dealing with your your mana pool and, and things like that 
Uh, and they want to turn healing into something more strategic as well. They don't want you to... Because they, they are noticing that people just aren't worried at all about their mana pool. Because their mana is regenerating so quickly via various spells and spirit and all that good stuff. And so what they want to do is try and maybe get rid of that and make it to where you actually have to think about this, this what particular spell you're going to heal with so that you don't run out of mana. Now, whether or not they will actually achieve this, because they've tried something similar before and it didn't really work out, is still up uh, for grabs. We'll see whenever beta happens what's going on with all of that. There was also a couple of hot fixes to, on uh, March the 4th, as well as February the 28th, which uh, was after the show. Uh, but basically, when it comes to the hot fixes, it was mostly the stuff dealing with battlegrounds and arenas. Focused assault debuff is now applied to flag carriers once both teams have been picked up, or both flag teams' flags have been picked up, uh, starting at the one-minute mark instead of the three-minute mark. So that's for Twin Peaks and Warsong Gulch. There's also a few tweaks to the Paragons of the Klaxi encounter and Siege of Orgrimmar. For February to the 28th, um, it's just a bunch of little tiny things, uh, a couple of bug fixes resolving uh, client crash issues. So, that's pretty much it for the World of Warcraft side of things. Last but not least, Hearthstone. They have been, there's a news article out there floating around somewhere. I forget where I saw it, but basically it's uh, discussing the golden hero cards. I believe if you get 500 ranked wins with a particular character, you will receive a golden hero card uh, for that particular class. So if you're playing a mage and you win 500 ranked games as a mage, then you will get a golden animated mage character thing instead of just the regular Jane of Proudmoore. I also heard that uh, for a random number of accomplishments you can basically change the way the background the background of like, your cards looks. Uh, yeah. Oh, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Alrighty then. With that being said, I do believe it's time for our top 10 and then a break. So, we're gonna head into the top 10, which this week is actually the top six, and it's the top six uh, moments and things that happened uh, during season six of But Wait, There's Lore. We'll be back right after the top 10, as well as a few commercials to do some Q&A and talk about season seven. It's got to bed. And the, and the producer is bitching in our ear about how fucking tired. It's like it's like he doesn't understand that every Friday night we do this every Friday night for like five years. <laughs> Here's your answers. I'll, I'll answer the questions without even answering them. One, yes, Thrall <laughs> will take his baby <laughs> self, his Thrallby. He'll take his Thrallby back through the portal to reestablish the timeline. Two. Jaina Proudmore is a Dreadlord. Three. If it's not Jaina, someone else is a Dreadlord. Look, I'm calling it now. By the end of this, someone's a Dreadlord. Someone you thought was really cool is a Dreadlord. Dirt it's going to blow your mind. Uh, talking. Right. Also, advance well, warning. Just before we go on, advance warning, guys. Don't use all caps in our IRC. Our mod has gotten drunk with power and he's kicking everyone. Kick me <laughs> twice. So uh, don't do it. That's a brawl. Don't do it. Okay, so now that the list is over, we can go through. I think we had four that we all agreed on. Uh, if our producer can switch over and show us the four that we all agreed on. I do believe it is uh, Paladin. We all thought humans. 
should be paladins. We all thought night elves should be druids. We all thought Draenei should be priests and uh, Pandaren uh, as the monk. So okay, that's, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I just saw the little green things that come across when he mm-hmm. when we see which ones we agree on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, my thing still. Pulls, We're getting so fancy I get stuff. I, that's what I'm telling you. See, this is why I'm excited this about the whole video. This is fancy stuff here. I feel like awesome. I'm in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, the person who I think almost universally we all were like, yeah, he probably should be number one, is uh, uh, Kelthazad. I forgot his name for a split second. <laughs> Kelthazad. <laughs> um, so, his story is kind of long, but basically, he was once a human wizard. He was once on the Council of Six of Dalaran, and then basically, um, he was like, yo, these people are whack. They're not like into the kind of magic I'm into. So he basically is like, fuck all y'all, and he leaves. And uh, basically he makes his way to Northrend because he's like subconsciously being summoned there by the Lich King. And he gets there and he's like, oh shit, this is like way too hardcore for me, I'm leaving. But uh, basically once you've gotten that far into the Lich King's grasp, you can't exactly leave. So he eventually comes back to uh, Lordaeron. Um, At this point he is uh, basically still totally with the Lich King now. Because like I said, you can't exactly leave the Lich King once you get that deep in there. And this has been sort of uh, crumbled up into short little tidbits and whatnot. But uh, it says, essentially, a theory has emerged that either Lorewalker Cho himself is a dragon or his ancestors were bronze dragons and passed on everything they knew to him. This would explain how he had no such an amazing amount of things about Pandaria. Uh, but he said, of course, when it gets more interesting was during the developer Q&A back in November where they asked that question about uh, if he has some sort of affiliation or is an agent of Nazdormu, and the developers replied with only time will tell. Uh, so going off of this, a number of splintering theories came off of this. Perhaps Lorewalker Cho himself is not a dragon, but his ancestors were, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. That's hole number one. Oh boy, what the fuck? Hold on, I'm Wait, just now... No, 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 listen, listen! I, I was just looking at it and was like, just saying it, but apparently she has different names for all of these. It says, Lady, I'm not even kidding, Lady Jane a Pre- Poundmore. <laughs> oh my god. the Grind Totem. Illidan Storm Rape. Garrosh Whole Scream. And Sylvanas... <laughs> <laughs> What's what is the last It's Sylvanas Wind Rubber. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lore News Now. I am Fried. Word on the street from Texas Chris is that Don is creepy. We'll have more on that story as soon as we hear from Necroxus with the stocks. Thank you, Pride. Today in the news from the stock market, uh, Stormwind Banking Commission announces a massive sell-off in Dark Iron, following the revelation that the Dark Iron Dwarves have been simply painting their iron bars black. Varian Rin today announces an increase on all goods to finance his war against Garage, sending the market spiraling down 90 points. However, the Echo Island Restoration Fund is up 15 points in the wake of a massive surge of tactical resources from the Barons. And finally, today in stocks, Orgrimmar reserves have tipped seriously in the wake of Garrosh's disappearance from the throne room. Thank you. That's stocks today on Azerothian. Uh, Lord News, whatever our show's called, I'm now over to Dunn for the weather. Dunn? In Northern Kalimdor, there is a 90% chance of blood and thunder. <laughs> that's all I've that's, that's got. I'm sorry. I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs>
And we are back right here on twitch.tv forward slash Spoke Gamer. I'm Spoke Gamer Pride, joined today by the Crocs of Tyranor, and we're going to talk a little bit about Season 7 beforehand, though. Make sure you guys send your questions, if you have any, to Tyranor here in uh, the Twitch chat. We'll just type them out in the chat or IRC or whatever. Wherever you happen to be uh, tuning in and chatting today on the show. Uh, Alright, so... Necroxus, you have a uh, you have a show to run. I do. That's right, I do. Starting at the end of this episode. What's the plan there, Dan? What's going on? What's the updates for season seven? People are just so interested in talking to me. Yeah, the, the uh, <laughs> uh, episode. I feel like okay. I should I should text you just to feel like included <laughs> in. Um, well, basically, what's going to happen is contingent on Blizzard and what they're going to do. Basically, um, this is the last episode of Season 6, but like we said, there's nothing to really talk about anymore. Um, we pretty much hit everything that we can until the next wave of leaks or uh, a beta starts or, you know, maybe War Crimes gets released or some shit like that. So, I'm pretty much going to wait until the first big info dump after this is over um before we start up again which with his luck will be tomorrow yeah <laughs> right yeah but uh, you know if we start again right away next week that's fine but uh, i just don't usually, usually there's like hints when they're gonna start doing stuff but this has just been silent lately so i don't know what's going on at blizzard headquarters but uh yeah we're pretty much just gonna wait until blizzard releases a bunch of information so we can pr give you guys new stuff instead of repeating old questions, old lore, old characters. While it's fun to do that, it can get kind of tedious and boring for people to watch. So, pretty much just going to wait. Um, there's some technical stuff also that has to be worked out, but no one has to concern themselves with that. Um, and yeah, so like I said, what Pride was talking about last week, I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, we're not going to be live streaming at the very... We're not going to be live streaming at the same time. So when season seven starts, we're not going to be live streaming Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and that's because I want to get Howie Dunn and Jam back on the show. Um, and like I said on the video, I'm cutting it down to four because it'll be a little more intimate and we won't be screaming over each other when we want to make points. Something that people have pointed out in the YouTube comments of season six. So I'm trying to avoid that by going from five to four. But the problem why none of them are here right now uh, is what I'm trying to fix is that they're all busy. Their schedules changed. Howie and Jan are still at work. Don is doing something, but he can't be here right now. So basically, is I'm going to stream when I can get everyone together. Um, I will announce it on my Twitter. I'll get someone to put it on uh, Prides, I guess, if he wants it still. Um, you know, I'll let people know when we're going to stream, but the show will still be coming out on YouTube on Fridays. So, uh, or the same time every week. I don't know if it's going to be Friday. Um, I think that's what I'm hoping. So at least there's some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, same thing each week. So, you know, we were streaming now. It's going to be coming out on Friday. So, you know, whatever, I'll something in that too. regard. Yeah. My words, Gary, thank you. Um, so that's about all I have right now, unless I'm forgetting something pride. Um, not that I'm aware of, no, um, I don't think so. Yep, so I'm really excited. I hope you guys should be too. We're going to try some really cool stuff. I'm going to try and change some stuff up. Um, the top tens were really, really fun, and they still are interesting. But when we do them every week, we kind of run out of ideas. So I'm trying to do those less often. Um, and maybe if the technical person knows how to or can figure it out, we might be able to get you know, people to, to make a video and send it in um, talking about something they like about the lore or a specific topic or a question. Uh, video questions I think would be really cool. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna try and try a bunch of new things, but keep most of the stuff, the old stuff, the same, and just try to reinvigorate. I feel like you show. should bring back lore in a minute. Oh, yeah, you should. Sure. You should. <laughs> that was fun. I only did it once because you guys stopped doing it before I joined, but it was fun. That's a good suggestion. And so. uh, how we should do more lore retconning. Yes, he should. He should. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, I know that I'm excited for Season 7 because I get to sit back 
kick back, relax, and just enjoy the show instead of sitting here pressing all these buttons all the time and uh, producing and hosting and all that good stuff. It's uh, can be quite annoying to uh, like sit here, be talking, and have to be pressing all these buttons, but make it not look like you're pressing all these buttons, and then you forget half the shit you're trying to say. And that's how like 90% of my catchphrases have have become about, right? Like that's how they, they started, was me forgetting what I said and then having to re repeat that over and over again to try and get myself back on track. But uh, anyways, anywho, we, uh, we, we now need to do some Q&A. We need to uh, finish out the show with some questions and some answers. Tyranor, you've been talking with the folks in the IRC as well as the Twitch chat. What's going on? Yes. What are the questions? What do you got? The first question comes from the Twitch chat from Tovo. He basically asks, who will take over the Forsaken if Sylvanas dies? And I have the answer for that, but first I would like to hear everyone else's thoughts. Um, I, I'm gonna go with, uh, what's his face? Um, Stromgard, Prince. Prince Galen? Galen, yes. Prince Galen of Stromgard. Simply because that's the, probably the only way any Stromgardian is ever, ever, ever going to be important to the fucking lore again. Since Dan the Trollbane is still up there filling out fucking paperwork. For Turalyon and Illyria, who aren't even fucking there anymore. They left, but God forbid if any of the other three sons of Lothar try and get out. No, you gotta fill out some paperwork. No, Dan of, Tr Dan of Trollbane is the, other, the only one, the only son of Lothar still in that land. Well, that's because he's the only one still make, doing paperwork. Everyone, <laughs> Cadgar, right? Cadgar just magically filled everything out with the powers of his mind, right? And then Falstad, see... He wrote it out and all that stuff. Like, he got everything Kurdran. good. Kurdran, that's right. Kurdran got all his shit figured out, and then, well, we know what happened with Kurdran, but... The point is, Danith is up, just still up there, just going through, making sure everything's clear before he returns home. And then when he gets home, guess what he gets to do? He gets to go back, only this time, it's 30 years ago. So, I don't know. Anyways, well, uh, my answer is, is Prince Galen uh, from Stromgard. Necro? Um, based on who is in the Forsaken right now, and saving they don't introduce new characters, which they fucking need to do, and that's why <laughs> Sylvanas needs to die, um, it would have to be either um, Nathanos uh, Maris, who is like Sylvanas' boy toy human archer who died and came back to life, or Master Apocalypse. Apothecary Farinel, who is the overseer of the Royal Apothecary Society. Well, actually, I would have to go with Master Apothecary Lydon, because in Sylvanas' short story, when Sylvanas kills, him, kills herself, he basically takes over. So, yeah. Mm. Even though That's he does a shit job, he still takes over. I don't know why they wouldn't pick Farinel, since he's like, for like the whole, since, he, then, since they've been in the game, it's been like, Sylvanas, and then pop the carries, go talk to Fire and all he does stuff. Oh, well. <laughs> That's the pitfall with the Forsaken. They have, like, one interesting character who they overuse to an absurd, absurd amount. So. Yes. Next question? Yes. Alright, Vandalia1998 in the RC chat basically asks... Which do you think is the best daily dailies story wise, and which do you think are the worst? I thought, didn't we? Wasn't this a question we asked or answered like two weeks ago? Maybe, but I don't think he asked it about the worst ones. I think it, I think he asked it last week, and you answered. Was it what, what was what it was? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then I answered it, and I said that I thought the Isle of Keldanas were the best. The worst would probably be. Um, half half hill market. <laughs> is that what they call that fucking place? Yeah. I try to avoid that shit as much as possible. But yeah, half hill market is. I just uh just yeah. hated it. 
I personally like the Ice Crown dailies, and I as well hate the half filled dailies. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. My personal favorite, and I am so glad they brought this up that they're going to do in Worlds of Draenor, is five, the 5.1 dailies. The uh, Shattered, or the Dominance Offensive and the Operation Shield Wall dailies. And it's not so much because of the dailies themselves, because they're just kind of, and eh, they're, 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 I guess they're in the, the middle of the road. But they, they made a storyline around the dailies, and I think that was an expert way to in, infuse dailies into a storyline by not making the story stupid or by not making the dailies boring. Um, my thing I, ones I hated the least from Burning Crusade, holy fuck, Skettis, that shitty place in Terracar Forest with the birds that you can only Skettis. get to at 70. Whatever, I hate that place. Also, Ogrela in Blaze Edge Mountains is also terrible. But if you finish Ogrela, the ogres in uh, Blaze Edge Mountains call you their king. Yeah, or but the, the grind is god awful. <laughs> like, I hated it. But you get ogres to worship you. I guess that's, that's all I know. Then you can that's kill That's all I know about ogres. Yeah. Fair so. enough. Next question? Yes. The Barrett in the Twitch chat asks, asks why, what do you guys think about the new racial slash changes? Like no disarms, cycles being dispellable, etc. I'm okay with them. I think they're cool. I really, I sense, well, I guess I, I still do, but I m more did in the past, played human. They're changing the human spirit to, like, one I think is really interesting. You can, you get a bonus and two secondary stats, but you can pick whatever one you want. Yeah, and you can ch true. You can change it. So I think that's really nifty. I have no opinions on it, but I kind of like them because I, because fuck hit and Hit thing, hit ratios are no longer a thing. So yeah, I like them from that point of view. Yes. Next. Next question. There, that's a police car. Tovo in the twist. What did you asks, do, Terranor? I don't know. Leaking <laughs> secrets. Probably, probably about that thing. Whatever. Tovo <laughs> in the twist chat asks, how do you feel about orcs in Warlords of Draenor not being smaller and less powerful, considering they haven't drunk the, the, the blood of Manoroth and such? I actually hadn't thought about that until just now. Is that a confirmed thing, that they're not going to be smaller or less powerful? Well, I, I think it's he most used it by comparing how big they are to player models and such. I feel. Well, I'm, I would imagine they're just using recolored character models, so mm, that's probably a mechanics thing. Uh, however, even back in those days, I mean, there were large and more powerful orcs than other orcs. I mean, you're always going to have your top of the food chain, right? So I don't think it necessarily breaks the lore, but if, uh, I, I mean, it, it's all a matter of perspective as well. I... Sort of related to this, but I'm going to diverge it off a little bit. I think the fact that the orcs are kind of like, fuck yeah, let's go into an army and murder a planet we've never seen before. Just because you told us, Garage, yes. I think the fact that they do that shows that orcs are pretty terrible as a race. And I wouldn't feel bad just killing all of them. The only saving grace is the snowflake Duratan and his son and his wife. Um, and even Drek'thar, even, well, even Drek'thar kind of is... Kind of a dick until he realizes, oh, years later, bet we did bad things. That was bad. But in the moment, I... he was like, fuck yeah! I was thinking more of Doomhammer, but whatever. Oh, Doomhammer, yeah, he's... Well, even him's not... He's okay. He let Gul'dan live! What a fucking stupid decision was that? Look, it was either let... Either kill Gul'dan and be destroyed by the Alliance's magic... Or don't kill Gul'dan. Or let Gul'dan betray you and ruin your one chance of destroying their capital of your enemy. Hey, he gave us the Death Knights. He gave us the Death Knights and the Ogre Mages. So yeah. It'll be interesting to see what Doomhammer does in this expansion. I'm still banking on him taking over the Black Rocks when Black Hand dies. That's a possibility. Assuming he dies in the raid, which I think he will. Alright. Next. Okay, next. I think you will like this one, Necro. Stimmer asked, 
Do you think that they will make Brock Cigar and enemy Boston see as part of the Black Rock Clan and they are one of the few baddies in the world of Draenor? And who do you guys think is the greatest fisher in WoW? I think it is Nat Pagel, of course. Of course it's Nat Pagel. Yeah. 100%. Like you even need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> is Brock Cigar going to be in the game? As a um, boss. As a bot? The only way I would want him in the game is as a boss so we could kill him and get it over with. Because Broxigar's not nearly, I keep saying this, he's not nearly as important as the, the very vocal minority of his fans pretend that he is. So, let's kill him or just not see him. I don't give a shit. Maybe he'll accidentally, you know, kill Garrosh. <laughs> that wouldn't even, that would not even redeem him. <laughs> that would not even be enough to redeem how obnoxious he is. Or maybe he'll accidentally kill himself. <laughs> that'd be funny. <laughs> that'd be the best. That'd be the best way for him to go. Oh shit! I actually like Brock Cigar. I don't. I, I don't like Brock Cigar's brother. Fawn over him so much as say Dunn does, but I mean, of all the orcs, he's probably the one that annoys me the second least. So there's that. I think Brock Cigar's brother is the coolest, but whatever. All right. Next question. Tovo again asks: If Grom dies and Garrosh isn't going to be leading them, who do you think will become war chief of the Iron Horde? War chief, not person who lead, who manipulates them from behind. Necro. Fuck. So the question is: If Garrosh dies, who leads the Iron Horde? If both Garrosh and Grom die, basically. Oh. I, I'm gonna say Gul'dan out of some sort of trickery and manipulation. As war chief, not as puppet master. Yes, as as war chief. I agree from the perspective of this is how I think it's gonna go. Six point oh happens. Uh, we know when we beat the Black Hand raid, we like destroy the Iron Horde's like main source of weapons. So in six point two, I'm just assuming six point one's not a raid. In six point two, with this the raid of Shatrath. I have a feeling Grom's going to be pretty desperate because they're going to be losing at that point. And uh, Gul'dan's going to be like, Hey, if you drink the blood, you will be stronger and can kill your enemies. And he'll be like, yeah. And that's when Garrosh is going to be like, no, don't. And then Grom kills him. So that's how I hope Garrosh does. <laughs> but uh, after Grom is beaten, killed, or whatever happens, I think the Iron Horde is going to just be fucked. And whatever the raid after that is, is not going to be the Iron Horde whatsoever. It's going to be the mastermind behind whoever's doing it, meaning Rathion. Of course. You mean Karaz? Well, Karaz, he's, there's no way he's doing all this on his own. Someone's telling him to do that shit. No, I, absolutely. I, I, I think I've talked about this several times, and I believe Rathian is ultimately the, the big guy doing all this, but I feel that, that you know, Gra or Garrosh is the face, right? Karaz is the, the man, the guy behind the guy, and then Rathian is just the guy behind all the guys. He's everywhere. He's he knows everything that's going on. He's manipulating the events that happen all throughout both uh, the latter half of Mists of Pandaria as well as uh, most of Warlords of Draenor, if not all of Warlords of Draenor. And then the raid after that is, or the not the raid, the expansion after that, we'll, then we will deal with Rathian and his plan or perhaps we'll see Rathian will come out and say something or what have you or we'll come back to Azeroth and the Burning Legion will have invaded again whatever the case may be I think Rathian is going to be the bridge that gaps Missa Pandaria to Warlords of Draenor to whatever happens to be the expansion after that so these next three expansions are going to be centered around Rathian, we just won't realize it until the end of the second. Yeah, I, I guess I meant so much as... I. Well, but then, the last raid, there's no way Kairos can be the final boss, because what a boring final boss. Unless there's like some crazy shit that happens in Warlords of Draenor. Um, I meant more like, yeah, it would be Rathion's plan that we're fighting against, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't even probably even be a boss. He would just be like, oh, we've defeated him for now. And then he's like, fuck you guys, I'm going to do another plan, because I do all the plans, I'm a black dragon. Here's my bit. 
If you recall, way back whenever they were talking about Miss of Pandaria originally, which was, what, 2011, right, when they announced uh, uh, Miss of Pandaria? Mm-hmm. They said that the first bit will be, we will be leveling inside of Pandaria, but the expansion itself would take place everywhere else. So why the fuck, then, are we back in Pandaria on the Timeless Isle doing all these dailies? Right, like, if you recall, they, they, they made a big point about how a lot of this expansion won't take place in on, on Pandaria. But mm -hmm. so far, we've had one patch, one raid, Siege of Orgrimmar, that doesn't take place in... Pandaria, and even then, parts of that raid do take place in Pandaria. And then we had that that the dailies that were dealing with um, the Cromcon Guard or whatever, and Corcron Guard or whatever. And uh, I was for, apparently I was thinking of that fucking space or space that uh, base. Uh, what is Gromgol base? Yeah. Oh. yeah, or Kromgar, Honor. What's that? Is that the guy that Grosh kills? Honor Kromgar. Krom Never Kromgar. forsake it. But Gromgol is not in Stone Talon, just FYI. Oh no, I was, I was, al yeah, I was altering another, <laughs> offering another option. explanation as to why. I said yeah. It. Anyways, so the the Corcoran Guard bits is going down in five point three, but even then we still ended up back in in Pandaria for ninety percent of the expansion, which they said, like half the expansion you won't be in Pandaria. I don't know. It's just something I just thought about and was kind of irked about. No, definitely. And I think the Timeless Isle bit, I made I made a video about this or talked about it. I don't remember what I did. Somewhere in the past where I was like, I don't think when well, they, they announced Warlords of Janor and I was like, fuck it, I hate this expansion. And I was like, it seems kind of like they just threw it out of left field and they tried to use Timeless Isle to be like, Oh look, we actually planned this story all along. When I really don't think they did, um, we know that they were developing Warlords of Janor when MOP was going before it even released. Right. Um, but I have a feeling like when 5.4 was coming along and they realized, oh, more of Warlords is being completed, we need a bridge. We need to bridge that gap somehow. So whatever they were doing, they scrapped it and they said, oh, timeless IO. Fuck, there's there's a time there's IO and there's time magic and some shit and time traveling dragons and go. Because Timeless Isle makes no sense in the context of the Siege of Orgrimmar storyline. It's such a random extra thing to be in there. It doesn't, doesn't. Like, I think they tried to implement things on the Timeless Isle to tie it into that. For example, Karaz and Rathian being on the Timeless Isle. But outside of the first couple quests and, and a few quest lines, they don't really have much to do with it. It's mostly Emperor Shaohao's bit. Yep. Yeah. So, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just something I thought about and something that kind of, like, I was like, eh. I feel kind of fucked over. Because, honestly, the entirety of the continent of Pandaria just sucks. I hate it. <laughs> I really do. I like I, everything but the valley. I don't like... I, I didn't like the questing design that they went with. I didn't like... The, the way they returned the returned us all to the grind of, of end game with the mm. reputations and stuff like that. I don't like that they did that stuff. It's well, like, they at least acknowledge that, so hopefully it won't be as bad. As bad. Yeah, it's still gonna be in the game, of course. But anywho, yeah. next uh, we I think we have time for like one, maybe two more questions. Did, oh, we even, did we even answer that question? What was the question? You two, you two, uh, you two answered it. I didn't, but never mind. Let's move on because we have a lot of questions. Casper nine eight seven asks, "Who is the most powerful faction leader in one v ones?" Well, would it would be either Sargeras or Yogg Saron, but I assume you're talking about playable people. So, yeah. Hmm, Probably Malfurion. Moses. I would say Melfurion. I'm gonna agree with Necro. Because he's basically Goku. That's basically what Storm Rage made him into Goku. I will still go with Moses. Anyway, uh, next question. Flubberdog59 asks, In the Horde Pandaria entrance cinematic, Nazgrim mentions the, a decisive victory at Tolbarad. 
Does this mean that the battle is over and over on in favor of the Horde, or is it still going on? I f uh, he Nazgrim said off the coast of Tolbarad, not in Tolbarad itself, so there's that. Yeah, hmm. that's true. Yeah. It might have just been some skirmish we never saw. Yeah. Okay, Casper987 again asks, do we know about the amount of soldiers each racial leaders have under the, their command? We don't have exact numbers because that's the RPG books and they're not, not canon. But I don't know. Well, I'll say this, the Horde has a lot less than they did a few months ago. Yep. I am confident in saying Stormwind probably has the most. The humans. I would actually venture yep. to say that the Night Elves have the most. Well, they're mm. kind of like slowing down and plus humans fuck like crazy so <laughs> we're just making more and more well the night elves are like let's have one child if that because we live for a bajillion years i would agree with the night elves but after the third war and the shifting sands and the all the things in world of warcraft i would not say the night elves at all who would be number two in the alliance then if or next if not for humans would it be night elves I might even I would, say dwarves. I was gonna say I was gonna say dwarves. I would pick. I'm dwarves. gonna say gnomes. Gnomes, gnomes lost seventy five percent of their population. No and, and yet they're and, still the second highest. I mean that's that's. <laughs> just I picked dwarves show. just because the dark irons part of them joined up, so that kind of increased their numbers somewhat. With Moira. They actually probably increased their numbers dramatically. Well, it wasn't all of them. It was like I I don't know if it was, they said like half or a part. I don't know if they ever specified, but it was part of them. Because the other ones were like, fuck them, we're going to Twilight's Hammer, because that's a good idea. And now they're all dead. Well, there's also the fact that the dwarves barely lost anything in any of the wars. They just hold up in Ironforge. <laughs> the dwarves and the gnomes are like, shit, we can't handle this! Shut the door! And then they look. Okay. Uh, next question. Tovo asks... What do you think Vol'jin will do to try and convince the Alliance that he's not going to be another Garrosh? He doesn't need to convince the Alliance because the Alliance already believes him for whatever reason. Vol'jin just needs to not do anything. Like, he just needs to take all of his people, put them where they belong, and don't do anything ever again. He needs to give the Night Elves Ashenvale. Is what he needs to do, like Taranda apparently thinks that they're getting, which I have no, no faith in Blizzard ever even saying that in a book, <laughs> that the Alliance is getting Ashenvale. But Taranda's like, sure, for Varian, so we're getting Ashenvale. <laughs> I feel like Varian's just like, fuck, just come on, Taranda, we'll give you Ashenvale. Just come, we need your Sentinels. I would say that if he really wants to have true peace with the Alliance. Not only give us Stromgard, the bits that the Forsaken have, but also help us, not even help us, matter of fact, just do it your damn self because it's partly your fault. Take out the ogres and the syndicate that are there. And then rebuild it. And then go to Outland. Take Dan Trollbane, grab him by the ear, and drag his ass back so that we can once again have a proper from Guardian Empire, as is so rightfully needed in the world how of Warcraft. It, how are the Forsaken responsible in any way for the Ogres and the Syndicate? They are. They just are. I mean, this is what we call a done argument. The, the, no, 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 no. The ogre leader was one that Sylvanas mind controlled in Frozen no, Throne, and then he the, went crazy. The ogre leader, the ogre leader in Altrak, not in Arathi. Oh, Arathi. Oh, yeah. It's 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 always their fault. That's that's just the 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 way that I've taken taken to think. Yeah, fuck the, the Forsaken. Uh, forsaken. It's just it's their fault. And when they complain about uh, all these sanctions that Garrosh put up, well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't have done stupid shit, like try and raise orcs from the dead. He wouldn't have got or pissed off. Or maybe you shouldn't have made your second in command a fucking dreadlord, like an infamous race of manipulating backstabbers. What a stupid bitch. What did, what did she think that he was going to betray her? 
You threatened his life into joining your faction. What an <laughs> idiot. She's like, I don't see what else. I don't know how that happened. You killed her two brothers and made her made him watch, basically. Okay. It's a continuation from Bitch to You Even Lore. I hate Sylvanas! <laughs> Alright, next question. Vandalia asks, we know Garrosh stops the host from drinking the blood of Manros, but is it before or after they drop the shaman, their shamanistic powers for warlock powers? Well, we do know they have shamans in uh, back over there. Yes. But the timeline is kind of confusing because the elements abandoned them immediately after Nazu was deposed, but it's kind of Gul'dan and yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's basically... It's basically, it's a different universe, it, the same rules don't apply, I guess. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to say then what happened in Warlords of Draenor is how ours meant to be, because pre-First War lore, we have lore on it, but it's kind of like very compact and very not, not only explained that, on a it's timeline. it's been changed so often as well. Like, uh, not, not even just like minor things, like... The, the time that it took place and the amount of years in between that it took place in and the events that happened in it and now happened before or after it and it's just it, the whole thing is kind of convoluted at this point and there's not a whole lot of it's really difficult to make sense of exactly what happened during the first war fun fact uh, if you follow certain timelines Grom Hellscream would be 130 years old Yeah. There's that. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that's the one where it's like 60 something years in between. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let me just copy a thing and then I'm going to ask the, que the next question. Okay. Sarah Alex asks I have a question, but you need to know what happens at the end of Shadow Moon Valley. So do you know? So do we know what happens at the end of Shadow Moon Valley? Yes. Yes. Spoiler alert! I, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Velen dies. Yeah, this is the okay. what happens at the Outland. end of Shadow Moon Valley in Outland. Warlords of Draenor, not in Outland. No, right. I think they asked about Outland. Oh, it's about Outland. What? I think so. What the fuck happens in the end of Shadow Moon <laughs> Valley in Outland? Illidan's like, bruh, 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 you messed up my shit. Come fight me. Yeah, I think it's basically where we are attacking a Black Temple, and there's an arrow there, and. Oh, there's a hole. There's a hole in their sewers. Let's go through there. And I guess. Wait. So what was the question? Right. So yeah. Okay. So we have the history. What's the question? He says he has a question, but you need to know what happens at the end of Shadow Moon Valley. So do you know? That's his question. Yes. Yes. Yes, we know. Okay. Next question. I'm confused, and <laughs> I feel like I, I just want to shoot this person for confusing me. I don't. I don't like it, person. I don't. I don't like it at all. Stop doing that. <laughs> don't. Don't do that anymore. Not to me. Stop do it. that when the Croxus takes over the show. But I won't have that. When shit. I when I'm here, don't don't do that to me because I don't like it. Yes. The Barrett asks. Will you guys talk a little, a little about the island up in the northeast in World of, Worlds of Draenor? There are a lot of people think Raphia is that. Do you think what it will happen with another time style copy thing or a raid or whatever? The northeast, the the island, the little one or the big one? Because the little one's PVP. Yeah. The big one's the Fields of Farallon, which they said will be coming in later in the expansion. Yeah. It's what becomes Netherstorm. He said island. He didn't say small or big. Well, one of them is Netherstorm, and the other one is a PvP area. Uh, there's also one in the south, which is the Kron homeland, or though no, the Ogre Empire. The Ogres. Ogre. Yeah, the Ogre's Empire, which apparently which in Outland is just gone, like blown up. Yes, because every other source says that the Ogres grew up in Blades Edge Mountains. No, let's make an entire different island for them. Why not? Okay. Well, they may have grown up in Blades Edge, but I guess they created their empire on another island or another landmass. We don't know if it's an island. We just know it's a landmass. 
Well, the the question is, would Rathion be on the fields of Farallon? I think he would. Possibly. Yeah. It depends it's on very, what the fields of Farallon are going to be about. It's also very reminiscent of what Deathwing did by going on his little island, which is why I like that that uh, that connection. That's because Rathion does the same thing his father does. Well, there's the whole Blades Edge Mountains recon, but we won't get retcon, but we won't get into that. Okay. Tovo asks, how do you think that Garrosh is going to be convinced to go back in time with Ka Kairos? I know he would want to, but how would he be convinced that of Kairos' motive and such? Hey, look, they're going to kill you. Come with me and you'll get away. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All right. Well, I believe that that officially puts us at one hour, so... I think we'll do like one more if you have like a really good question to end the season on Tyranor. You think you have a uh, solid question? The best I can say is an uh, an above average one, but not a good we'll, one. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take what we can get. Lizard Spherex, I hope I pronounced that right, asks, "Do you think that the Hiles will ever get back together with the Blood Elves?" No. Not anymore. Jaina ruined that. Not only that, but the, the High Elves are part of the Alliance, and the Blood Elves are part of the Horde, and so that, that's kind of division number one. Division number two, uh, magic addiction. Division number three, the way to properly manage and deal with magic as a whole and use magic. They have different philosophies. Um, fourth division, why the fuck would they? They're in a better position than the Blood Elves are. Not particularly considering they're only one tenth of the blood of population, but whatever. Which is fine, but they're part of the alliance, so they're automatically in a better position than the blood elves are. Blood elves used to be a part of the alliance. They had their shot. They gave it up to go join uh, Moses. Blame, blame Garethos. Yeah, we do blame Garethos. Anyways, that's gonna do it for us here on But Wait, There's Laurie here at twitch.tv forward slash Smoking Gamer. I am the Smoking Gamer. I have been joined today by Necroxus and Tyranor. And this has been the season finale of season six of But Wait, There's Lore. And from me to you, I wanna say thank you. It's been fun, it's been a hell of a ride. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. Thank <laughs> you.